Hello, viewers, subscribers, and readers. Today, we are going to have the State of the Union as it relates to the AI industry. Now, look, it's been about a year, right, since AI has really taken over the imagination of not only the tech community, but also the investing community as well. If you look at some of the best performing stocks, some of the best performing sectors, most of them are related to AI or directly related to artificial intelligence. So it's become a very important piece of not only the tech community, but also the investing community as well. And today I wanna kind of rewind time, look back a little bit, because if we look back about a year ago, a lot of the discussion around AI, a lot of the headlines, particularly on the mainstream news websites, had headlines like AI being a quote, threat to humanity or that AI was going to take everybody's jobs and then all of a sudden universal basic income was gonna to have to be ushered in because computers were gonna do virtually everything and there was gonna be no need on earth for humans. Now, a lot of this talk ended up being simply smoke and mirrors because as we learned and as we saw over the last year, AI was far more of a job enabler and something that actually helped people and helped companies become more productive than actually taking jobs away. Now, those headlines didn't go away because largely you had people in the AI community like Elon Musk, like Sam Altman of OpenAI, they actually stoked those fears. They would stoke them on their own social media sites that they own. They would also go to Congress and stoke the fears as well. And the reason why, and we correctly identified this over at Brownstone Research was the players inside of AI knew the value, knew the wealth creation event that AI was gonna become. So they were trying to do something called regulatory capture. They were trying to get Washington to create licenses and regulations around AI. So the Microsofts, the Elon Musk, and the Googles and the Apples, they would have full control over this powerful new technology. Well, what we learn about Washington or what we learn is the same in Washington is Washington and lawmakers are very, very slow to act, particularly when you have a divided Congress and particularly when you have lawmakers approaching a very important election year. There is a very much an unwillingness of doing things. That has given the AI industry the freedom and the willingness to invest and continue to expand. And you continue to see both large companies and small companies continue to compete in the space. And I would expect that to continue. And that's also a very healthy ecosystem as it relates to the AI industry. Now, what we also talked extensively about here on the newsletter and on the channel is there's gonna be three phases to the AI rollout. So you're gonna have hardware, you're gonna have software, and eventually you're gonna look around and AI is gonna be everywhere. It's very similar to the internet. Eventually, or initially with the internet, you needed hardware, you needed modems, you needed the PCs in everybody's house, you needed the fiber optic cable, you needed eventually Wi-Fi technology, you needed eventually high-speed internet, you needed all that hardware investment to enable eventually software to really start to take over. You look at the software that has been produced since you've had the internet really come of age, things like Google, things like Netflix, and things like Amazon. And then finally, we look around and internet is essentially everywhere in our lives. In fact, you're consuming this piece of content via the internet. Now, the same thing is going to happen in the AI industry. We're not even a year from NVIDIA shocking the world with their Q2 guidance where they saw demand and sales and forward demand really accelerate for their hardware chips. But we correctly identified here on the channel that the hardware as it relates to AI was gonna center particularly around three companies and there was gonna be a lot of other pretenders kind of in the hardware space. You're gonna have Nvidia clearly who's been investing in the AI hardware space, they were going to lead. You're gonna have other companies though, like Broadcom, who have a lot of IP and a lot of technologies and a lot of great partners, they were also gonna do well. And then AMD, kind of being the upstart in the space, being able to put pressure and be able to come out with products that at least on a performance basis, certainly compare and compete with NVIDIA as well. And companies like Intel were more or less gonna fall by the wait side because they simply don't know how to execute. That was the case for all of 2023, and I don't expect much to change 
in 2024. On the software side, the major tech giants who have dominated software for the past uh, several decades, the Microsofts, they're certainly going to have a head start as they already have the software, the expertise, and the customers to continue to do that. Now, on the large language model side, there's still a battle between closed sourced language models. The closed source or proprietary language model is like what you have going on over at ChatGPT, or certainly even a better example, what you have going on over at Google. Those are language models that are owned and more or less controlled by the large tech giant. Now, they have APIs, they've opened these up to other applications, but at the end of the day, that language model is completely walled and closed off by the large tech giant. What's interesting is you have a company like Meta, who I think is just kind of trying to poke the bear by creating large language models, which cost tens of millions of dollars to develop. Meta creates these large language models and simply releases them out into the public for free and allows any type of use and modification to the language model. Initially, I think this was done by accident, but I think what Meta found was they've stumbled into a way to reduce the competitive advantage over at competitors like Google, like Microsoft, and gives Meta an interesting position in the space of open source LLMs. And these open source LLMs are actually being used. Most notably this week, we saw NVIDIA is using Meta's open source LLMs to develop next generation computer chips and train new and upcoming and incoming employees in a better way. It's totally come full circle for NVIDIA making the chips that enable the software. And now NVIDIA is using the software to train and manufacture its products. It's absolutely amazing. Now, what we're really looking for in 2024 is particularly the moment when AI starts to go everywhere. And the everywhere moment is when AI goes beyond the tech community goes even beyond kind of the corporate community, which obviously is looking for every advantage it possibly can to enable its employees to work faster, better, and ultimately cheaper. The everywhere moment is like when your grandma buys an iPhone or when your six-year-old is connecting to the internet at school. We're still probably a ways away from AI infiltrating the school system in a major way, but there's gonna be more sectors that are gonna get on board with AI. There's regulatory stuff, there's compliance, there's privacy. There's a couple of different layers that some industries need to get through, but there's a few that are probably gonna get on board in a major way later this year. You're looking at sectors like the FinTech community, healthcare, in the insurance business, they're going to integrate AI in a major way to help them run their business and see the benefits that a lot of these tech companies have seen by integrating AI into their business. Now, folks, the state of the AI union is not only strong, but it's continuing to get stronger. The fears around AI being a, quote, threat to humanity, those have finally calmed down. The threat of AI taking every person's job and universal basic income being ushered in, the threat of that has also calmed down. People are starting to look and see AI for what it is, and that is a tool that helps people do things more efficiently and helps business run more efficiently. And after coming off some of the highest and steepest inflation numbers that this country has ever seen, the greatest and biggest and best way to tamp down inflation is actually gaining productivity at businesses and industry. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's exactly what we're going to see going forward. There's going to be a lot of news in the AI industry over the next year. And I look forward to covering it and bringing it to you here on the channel and the newsletter. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.